What is up YouTube and welcome to the very first episode of Not Drinking With TJ. So about 10 minutes ago I was just in the park and a homeless guy walked up to me and said hey can you buy me some alcohol and considering the topic of this video I thought it's pretty appropriate but yeah I took him to the convenience store anyway and bought him three uh, cartons of sake and some food so uh, yeah if, for those of you who follow me on Instagram you will have seen that video if not I'll put a little clip here now yeah <laughs> <laughs> で、カードで。じゃあ、飲みすぎないで。いや。いざ、私の時にもね、ビジュポイントで仕事がないんですよ。だよね。はい。これはっきりとホームレスです。ああ、大変だよね。うん。こんなこと言って殴られてもいいん
That's been here for probably 10 years now. So here it is on the right here. So uh, let's stop outside. So on the left here, we've got this building called the Dai Nagoya building, which it was probably finished maybe two years ago, something like that. They used to be there. That used to be where my bank was. And it all got knocked down. And then all of a sudden they built this pretty cool like shopping center with a post office in it and a bank and all, all sorts of cool stuff. But anyway, so the hub there on the right, uh, as you can see, it says fish and chips, ales and stouts. And then if I move back a little bit, British pub. So that that's the first of five that are in this city. So I thought I'll just uh, do a whistle stop tour and show you the ones that I most that I used to go to the most. That one I used to go to quite a lot, but only when I first lived here, because I lived maybe a five or ten minute walk from there. So that used to be the, the, the place to go to after after work or on days off. Uh, more roadworks. That sucks. I'll have to go. Right, in that case. Right, it's going to take a while to get there, so see you in a minute. There's time warp. Let's do the time warp again. Damn, son, I'm heels. She walks like that dude from Star Trek, the new Star Trek Discovery. Not Saru, is his name Saru? Must be Saru's sister. Oh, yo! He's a crazy looking mofo. Must be high. Uh, I wonder if people can hear me. Maybe I'm talking too loudly. Because everyone's staring the fuck at me. Either it's just because I'm a big bastard riding a small bike with a camera strapped to my face, or I'm talking really loudly and they can hear me and they're like, oh, look at that, there's a crazy guy on a bike talking to himself. Oh well. It's the kind of shit you have to deal with when you're a motor vlogger. I sort of lost my point for a little while there. All right, we now arrived at the second hub on our destination. So this one is called the Fushimi Hub on the second floor up there. Now. As I said before, the Hilton Hotel, which is over there, you can't really see now. I used to drink around there a lot because my friends have got bars there, but their bars don't open till 5 o'clock or sometimes 6 o'clock. So I used to come here for the happy hour. The happy hour here is 5 until 7. See on the sign there it says beer 400 yen, cocktail 400 yen. During happy hour, you can get a pint of gin and tonic for 180 yen, which is just, you know, ridiculously cheap. And they also do food and stuff in there. And see on that little sign there, it says no cover charge. So some of the bars here will just charge you for even just entering the bar, even before you've ordered anything. There'll be a charge that gets on your check at the end. But yeah, so that place there, five till seven. Let's continue on the ride in there because I'm getting sick of waiting around. Uh, from five till seven, I would get probably the first hour, I'd probably get four or five pints down me of gin and tonic which you know that's that's quite a lot considering it's probably two or three shots of uh, of gin in them so the first hour I'd, yeah let's say i'd get four down me uh, i'd be texting away my friends hey where you at where you at so they'd all come and join me and then the next hour because it's only a two hour happy hour uh the next hour same sort of your pace sort of slows down a bit probably have two pints in the first half an hour and then when it gets like to within so like five minutes before seven o'clock, you're like, oh my God, happy hour's almost over, almost over, oh my God, we've got to order like another three. So then we'd um, say at 6.55 or whatever, we'd go back to the bar and order probably another three pints of gin and tonic. Get those down us. So at this point we've had at least eight pints of gin and tonic. And then, uh, you know, so then it's like say 7.30 by the time we've left. And then we'd go to another bar, drink there for a good hour or so then carry on to another bar and another bar and another bar and that would like the bar hopping would normally go on till say 12 o'clock maybe till midnight 
then whoever was you know left out of the group whoever was still still in a drinky mood then we'd go on to some of the uh seedier places in town well that, actually that depends like it depends if you got lucky and pulled a chick then you would obviously just go home with the chick if you hadn't what we used to do is go to the philippine clubs or the hostess clubs because um, if you go to one of these hostess clubs there's a bunch of sexy girls there wearing frilly dresses so you sort of get to choose and so they sit next to you and then they just pour you drinks for the rest of the time you're in there so you pay but by the hour so for an hour you can basically drink you know as much as you want of uh, whiskey and coke or whiskey and soda or beer whatever is the uh, poison of your choice um, and so actually when you take into account the price of it it's usually for a real dive of a place it's about 3,000 yen for an hour uh, and obviously if you go to the exclusive high-end ones then it's you know it's silly money you, you're talking about a thousand bucks just to uh, sit next to some sexy girl and drink drink whiskey so we always used to go to the dives <laughs> yeah so yeah if we didn't get lucky with a, a guiding hunter girl in the hub or one of the other bars then we'd head out to these uh, hostess clubs and get our fill of uh, whiskey and coke until probably so two or three in the morning it always ended up with the plan being just like let's just have one hour and then it was always like an extension oh let's just stay for another hour and then the, you know the members would slowly die i'd be like ah fuck this man it's like three o'clock in the morning it's gonna be sunrise soon and then it'd just be me and one or two others who would be like no 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 we're not going home yet we're gonna we're gonna drink this out until the sunrise and then um when it did come to the sunrise we would generally go to the convenience store buy a couple more cans of beer or um, whiskey and sodas and then just sit in the park until the trains start again because uh, the trains are not 24 hours here so uh, yeah we would just sit and drink and wait until like I think 6.30 maybe it was one of the trains that one of the guys um, had to get home so yeah that was basically what we would do on a a really regular basis it wasn't just a one-off kind of thing we used to drink till 6 30 in the morning quite often at least three or four times a month i would say all right so as i said there are five hubs in this city but uh two of them are kind of in place you know, cops no one crossing the yellow line in front of the cops uh, two of them are sort of in places where you have to get off the bike and walk to and I don't want to risk getting a ticket or anything like that so I'll just ride up to the main one this is pretty much the main one so this area we're in now let's have a quick look around is uh, it's called Sakai so that sign up there if you can see it Nishiki Dori Nishiki Dori is like pretty much party central of this city um, but more like I wouldn't say sophisticated really but it's more of a slightly more up marketplace than some of the other sort of the uh, CDS sort of uh, red light districts and stuff like that but this is where pretty much everyone comes on a night out right now this is a Sunday at uh, what time is it like 2 p.m. or something so now it's dead but nighttime man this place is just packed so this is the last hub on our little whirlwind adventure so it's actually closed now which is surprising because they used to be open from lunchtime but i think because of corona they're not allowed to open so they, they have to cut their hours down but this particular hub is pretty big inside it's hard to tell from the outside but inside is pretty big um let's get off the bike and have a look at the menu i suppose show you guys what kind of shit you can get in there um so also like you can watch baseball here and rugby and football and sometimes racing as well so yeah here we go here's happy hour so it used to be 180 yen like i said but now it's 200 yen so yeah you can get i don't know it's actually changed quite a lot actually but yeah you can get beer on slight 30 percent off beers i think this is just the discount menu stuff where you get discount on but there is an actual happy hour drink menu where it is literally 180 yen for a pint of bloody <laughs> vodka and coke or gin and tonic or long island iced tea well, obviously not a proper long island iced tea because they couldn't 
they couldn't sell long I had an iced tea for 200 yen but um so in that particular hub uh fuck I can't even remember the amount of times they're going to fight in there so so many times because that like I said this area is party central so usually the other quieter hubs will be full of like businessmen and um people have just finished work and just stop for one or two drinks or something but that one because this is like the party area down the street on the left which I can't go to because it's one way street there's a load of popular nightclubs and so what would happen is the hub used to be open till I think 3am or 4am depending on what day it was but what people would do is go there before a club uh, get tanked up so they could so they didn't get ripped off in the in the nightclubs and some some of the nightclubs around here actually got uh, a real strict enforcement by the cops because of so many um, so many times the cops were called out to incidents at them so some of them had to close at 1 a.m. 1 so what people will do is they go to the hub, get drunk, go to the club until 1 a.m. and then come back to the hub so the place was full of tanked up people like properly drunk motherfuckers like myself and so there'd always be fights and I guess the only good story, well it's not a good story, but the only story that I can remember like getting into a fight or picking up a girl or whatever, that was just a regular occurrence so there's nothing that particularly sticks in my mind but the one thing I remember is, um, it's quite a long time ago actually, it was probably 10 years ago so I was in there and there was these guys from, um, where the fuck is Borat from? Kazakhstan? Yeah, they were from Kazakhstan. And uh, I was waiting for a friend, or my friends had left, I can't remember which, but so I was drinking with these guys. They're all kind of young, but they they sort of looked like they've watched one too many gangster movies. They're all with the slick back hair and the black, black leather coats and stuff. And I was kind of taking the piss out of them. Like, drunk me is more of an asshole than normal me so I was really giving them shit I, I think I said something to them about Borat and like oh yeah Kazakhstan I heard you all fuck uh, goats or yeah whatever I can't remember what I said but it was obviously bad so one of the guys took a disliking to me and told me something like hey you should go and you should go somewhere else like you're annoying us or something so I use this word quite often and I don't mean it in the you know literal sense, but I said whatever motherfucker to this guy. And he smashed me in the face with a cocktail glass. Like he basically glassed me, but the only thing on the table was uh, a shot glass, a cocktail shot glass, which if anyone's tried to break one of those, yeah, they're pretty hard to break. <laughs> he managed to do it anyway, but he uh, glassed me in the face with this cocktail glass and pretty lucky really, he cut me really close to my eye. So I had a big gash on my eye. And then all of a sudden, I guess reality set into those guys, and they were like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, what have we done? And so um, they started shitting themselves basically, and they were like, please, please don't kill the cops, I'll lose my beads when I'll have to go home, please. So, being a drunken fool that I am, and not a particularly aggressive drunken fool most of the time, I just said to the guy, go to the bar, buy me another whiskey, and bring me a bunch of uh, tissues back to stop the bleeding and I'll forget it ever happened <laughs> so the guy instantly ran to the bar bought me a whiskey brought back a bunch of wet towels and I just basically finished probably another two two or three drinks in the bar just holding the wet tissue to my face and I'm like how stupid can you be to be you've got a massive gash on your face you're bleeding everywhere and you just carry on drinking nice for Ari, bro so yeah that's the kind of level of stupidity that um, I, I was involved with so after that happened the guys uh, made a, a sharp part exit and got themselves out of dodge and i started walking home and went to a convenience store to buy some more booze and the lady i think in the convenience store said you know you got a massive cut on your face do you know that and i was like yeah of course i know that and she's like well you know i don't mean to be funny but it doesn't look like the sort of cut that you're going to put a band-aid on and it'll go away i think you should go to the hospital so at like four o'clock in the morning I started texting my wife because she was working as a nurse so I texted her and I was like can I come to your hospital now and she's like why what's happened and I was like ah, nothing's happened really I just got a cut on my face so turned up at the hosp her hospital and then I realized you know just how embarrassed she was that 
her drunken ass husband just turned up at four, four o'clock in the morning in a taxi with a huge cut on his face, stinking to high heaven of booze. And then I started to start, started to get all emotional. I was like, oh God, what am I doing? I'm a fucking idiot. I mean, this is almost 10 years ago. And even at that point, I'm thinking, I'm an idiot. I'm drinking too much. What am I doing myself? And it took me all that time. It took me until this year to actually finally do something about it. Anyway, so the the doctor is her friend and he's stitching me up and I'm like crying, crying, like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And the doctor's like, what happened? And I'm telling her, oh, just some guy glassed me, it's all right. And, and he's like, what happened with the plate? Oh, nothing. I just told him to buy me a whiskey and I forget about it. And he's like, what? But, you know, obviously a normal person would be so surprised at my reaction. But yeah, that's the kind of dumb shit that I used to get up to. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of a shitty story, depressing story. So I'll make sure the next story in episode two of Not Drinking with TJ is a funny story or a, a sexy story. So stay tuned. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like the video. And if you'll be so kind as to share my video, that would be most appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.